If you're anything like me, the ability to build and then use your own creation in a fully fleshed out massive world caught your eye. This game hasn't attracted a lot of attention, which might beg the question if it's good or not. Let's dive into this one together and see if this is one of those hidden gems. Airman was developed by a single developer over the course of several years. I'm still rather impressed with how active they are at fixing bugs and adding new features based on the feedback they receive. A lot of indie developers lose touch with this these days, so I always find that really refreshing to see. When you first start up the game, you're greeted with a very busy menu. Don't let this immediately turn your ways, it's pretty simple once you dig through it. Basically the game consists of building your own means of transport across air, ground, or water. This game combines building and customization aspects with the traditional MMORPG. Then you get to use them in an impressive world. You can choose to build your own or use one of the game's prefabs. Building this game is one of the least grindy, creativity-focused building systems that I've seen in a long while. No need to worry about connecting pipes, electrical systems, and getting an engineering degree on the way. You simply place things down to make it work, freeing you to focus on creating what's actually in your mind. You can even group build with other players if you want, which I thought was pretty neat. Once you're in the actual world, you can start your own crew or team up with others. The game will feel pretty familiar to most RPGs at this point. This includes features like missions and quests, gathering materials, checking out special events in world, and defending forts, etc. Objectives will vary through these features, like defeating all ships at a marked waypoint or capturing equipment, just to name a few. Through gathering resources and completing missions, you gain resources to research new tech and build better items. You can also upgrade the appearance of your character, tools, and even the ship appearance. You'll unlock better weapons, ship features, and ship classes through these missions. Quests will teach you the game as well as giving you a starter boost of materials. Challenges give you extra goodies and, well, a challenge. After a little time in game, it started to remind me of games like Sea of Thieves. You're always wandering the world with the risk of being attacked ever present. Except now you have access to not only just the sea, but land and air as well. Oh, and a super awesome grappling hook to fly around with. There's a ton of content here to keep you busy for a while. There are even weekly events that are held. Building your own equipment and using it to overcome your adversaries is incredibly addicting and gratifying. It's not exactly the most unique on its own, but it combines many playstyles into one, which is what makes this game more unique as a whole. It's also really worth mentioning that the game's community is wonderful. The very first time I streamed this game, people came flocking by with their ships to show them off and help me figure everything out. People will gladly lend you a helping hand and show you the ropes. This is always just nice and refreshing to see, especially when you compare it with other <laughs> games. Of course, there are some things that I don't quite like about this game. The least of the concerns being that ships only really need one person to crew them effectively. Sure, extra crew could be useful for tasks such as boarding, repairing, or launching smaller vehicles off of your main ship to attack with. Outside of that, you can pretty much one-man it effectively without too much concern. I suppose this also works for the game as well, considering you can hop on by yourself and still be able to play. When friends become available, however, you have the option to team up and become more efficient. This game does follow the traditional grind away playstyle, which isn't for everyone. It's a little different here, however, as it's still interesting in between. Most grindy games give you little tidbits at a time and string you along with that. Airman's grind feels more like every time you run the grind, you get a big advance, so it's not really as slow and tedious. There also isn't really any tutorial in the game outside of the quests. The quests exist to teach you the basics of the game as you play, but you still might get a little lost on the way. It's also worth mentioning that building custom ships gives players willing to do such a distinct advantage. The prefabs are alright, but if you take your time to make your own, it will not only match your playstyle, but be far more versatile. If you stuck with the prefabs, you would feel outgunned very quickly, so if you're not really that intent on building, this will be a little bit limiting. Combat, in my own personal opinion, is also a bit weird. 
There's no real HP indication, and items turn darker to indicate damage until they are destroyed, which can be difficult to see sometimes. You circle around and ram each other until someone dies. It's not a bad system, because you can specifically target what to destroy, which leaves a lot of room for strategy. You can also change your difficulty settings so you don't lose everything when you die either, which is rather nice. It just feels a bit strange in a way that I have difficulty quantifying. A good example was when I was in combat with someone and they shot off all of my guns. Nothing had really alerted me that that had happened, so I was left wondering why I wasn't hitting them anymore. This is a very well thought out, open world with lots of features and content to keep you busy for some time. Most players that I've met have well north of 200 hours at this point. Build to suit your needs. Customize the heck out of your stuff without needing an engineering degree. Too many games overcomplicate this process, so this is a welcome change. I'm kinda lazy though, so maybe that's just me. Active dev and amazing community. This always helps keep a game playable, especially when its community isn't like the one in Rust. The game does feel a little janky on the other hand. Things such as crazy active water and harmlessly bouncing off objects give it that feel. Builders will have a heavy advantage over those who chose not to build and use the prefabs instead. And there is the grind. Again, it's not as bad as in some other games, but it's still a factor for me. Don't run away just yet. This is a simplistic yet very deep and intricate game where the grind has real tangible rewards that actually give you something big to advance with. I still rate this one a solid 7 out of 10, good, and most certainly receives the Stealth Fox recommended buy. It's sold for an economical price, so it's very easy to buy and give it a go without too much thought. Even if the servers are quiet, you can still one-man a ship and be just fine. The dev has still done a wonderful job on their own and is very active and keeps things interesting. This is definitely one of those hidden gems that you have to try. Please consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons if you like this video. Not only will you be alerted for my future content, doing such helps the channel a ton and you will have my undying love. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed it, stay safe out there, and we'll see you in the clear blue skies.